Hey everybody. Today is June 1st, 2014. I made a video yesterday on May 31st about the Mitar Lux and its hard drive failures. <laughs> yeah, not hard drive failure, but hard drive failures. Um, I got two hard drives going out in this thing. Both of my one terabyte drives in the RAID Striper are beginning to fail. And they're Seagate one terabyte drives. And Yesterday, I showed you how one drive had one bad, bad sector. That drive still has only one bad sector. But this one here that had, I think, five or six bad sectors yesterday has over 30 today. See, there, that's five right there. And look how long the list is. Up to like over 30 by now. So lots of bad sectors on the second of the two drives. And I should be getting two new drives. I would say either Tuesday or Wednesday, which would be probably the third or fourth of June. And my raid stripe has gotten to the point where um, the logical drive has so many errors on its partition that I can't back it up using um, the one that's backup utility. And if I try backing it up using um, an old piece of software called Data Lifeguard Tools, which of course this software here is very old, look what it says. It says Data Lifeguard Tools has detected that support for drives over 137 gigabytes is not fully enabled. And I say cancel because that pertains to Windows XP. I'll, I'll explain that in a moment. Basically, I use this old software here and I would go try the drive to drive data copy. And I'd try, you know, saying source path, you know, C, destination path, F, which is the two terabyte spare I have in the system. And it would throw up a bogus notice saying that um that the destination path has too little disk space to um, hold all the files, even though I just formatted it. And it's got plenty of space. So the reason why it's doing that is due to um, errors in the file system. I mean, it's so bad to the point where... When I restart the system and, and run check disk with the um, repair, you know, with the R and the F flags, check disk will freeze. I mean, the whole system will freeze at about 13 or 14 percent complete of step four or five. And yeah, that that also fails. Um, Ease US Partition Master. When I try to use that to copy my partitions from drive to drive, it hangs up. So I'm stuck to just copying my you know, important files, all my documents, pictures, music, videos, all that stuff. I've copied that over to the two terabyte spare. And I'm also copying my utilities files, which is, you know, all my computer repair stuff over to the Black Max so that way I can still work on computers when they come in for service. And unfortunately it's looking like I'm gonna to have to reinstall Windows because I can't back up this um C partition due to all the errors. Like I mentioned, I've tried check disk many times. Won't repair them, it freezes up. That's because the drives have gotten so many bad sectors to the point where you know things are starting to really mess up. As a matter of fact, I've been getting these pop-ups from RAID experts saying task 30 timeout, you know, disk 20 timeout on you know said disk it means the drive is not responding. As a matter of fact, the day before yesterday, um, when the problems really started to get bad, um, my RAID actually went offline because one of, because the drive with all the bad sectors, with most of the bad sectors, pretty much just fell flat on its face, caused the system to blue screen, and you know all the, all that wonderful stuff. And just for you, just to show you guys um, what model of drives I have, again look up RAID expert. The drives that are failing are both Seagate ST1000D M003s. And um, they have, you see the firmware on those drives is CC43. But it's funny, smart status still shows it's healthy even though these drives are, fl are falling foul on their faces. Last time I had a um, Seagate drive begin to fail was not bad sectors, it was just failing a smart status. 
So, anyways, um, it's been three years. Um, no, it's been. Well, it's, yeah, it's, um, between three and four years since I've had to reinstall Windows on Mid Tower Deluxe. The last time I did an install of Windows 7 on this system was back in late 2010 when I installed the MSI motherboard. This Windows install here has lasted that long. I mean, I even transferred this Windows install from the MSI board to the a trunk board because they had the same chip, um, same chipset family. So I was able to install a new board and, you know, go on from there. Now for some of you guys, um, Windows installs aren't that big of a deal. But a system like this that has, um, let me show you how many programs I have on here. And you think this is probably a big mess, it's just I have a lot of programs. No, I don't want to go to parental controls. <laughs> programs and features. It's still indexing. Now some of the stuff I don't need and I probably won't reinstall, such as AutoCAD. I only use that to, for, a, for a course I had in college. Another example would be the Microchip MP Lab IDE. I don't need that. You know, all these high-tech C compilers. I don't really see myself using that anymore. You see, the thing is, if I need it, I'll reinstall it. But look at this. 174 programs installed. Total size, 6.34 gigabytes. That's a lot of programs. So it's definitely going to take me a while to install all that stuff back after a Windows reinstall. Let alone having to search for drivers and install service, you know, service packs and all that junk. And here's another thing that I'm probably going to lose access to. And that is my recorded TV shows. Yes, they're on a set, they're on a totally separate drive. See, there's all my TV shows. I have 180 recorded shows on this drive. It's a one terabyte single drive. Currently using, let's see, um, over half. And the reason why I'm going to lose an access to these shows is because they're quote unquote copy protected by Time Warner cable. Because Time Warner likes to overly you know, overzealously apply their copy once flag to every channel besides locals. Now, see if I was on Comcast or, you know, one of the other cable providers that doesn't overzealously apply the copy once flag, I could easily just, you know, watch these shows again. Now, in regards to that, what I did do was I um, made a backup of the Play Ready folder that's in the program data folder. This MSPR to HCS, I believe, may possibly be a um, DRM key. I also saved the registry file. Show you edit to show you what it says. That's what's in the reg registry that I um, exported. I saved that. And I um, also saved a DRM folder that's also inside the um, program data folder so hopefully you know hopefully I've backed up at least most if not all of the needed files for DRM so it's gonna be a let's see how it goes when I do this re after I do the reinstall of Windows and this is gonna be a real big adventure so to speak of getting all of this stuff reconfigured I mean, the thing is, it had to reinstall in three years. <laughs> in a way, it's kind of due for one because startup is getting pretty slow, and there's a couple of nagging things that I'd like to clear out. So, um, I'll be getting the replacement drives from Seagate later this week, and we'll see how this goes. Now, for a finish this video, let me go and go back to that um, that piece of software I was telling you about. The um, Oh, and I tried many tool drive copy too, and that uh, was an epic fail because the partition had errors that I couldn't fix. This data lifeguard tools. Let's go and show you what that message popped up meant for all you guys out there who have not been repairing computers for all these years. Basically, um, in Windows XP, and I believe it was prior to ser um, Service Pack One, Windows XP cannot support could not support partitions over 137 gigabytes. It was just a limit to the, you know, the the um, 
the coding of Windows XP at the time, and I believe when Service Pack 1 came out, it, you know, gave it the fix to support <laughs> partitions much larger than that. Or drives much larger, larger than that. And basically, I'm running this software which was designed back in the XP days on Windows 7, which obviously has native support for drives that are multiple terabytes in size. And as you can see, this software looks in the registry to find, you know, the registry key that would give Windows XP support for, you know, drives over 137 gigabytes and it's not finding that because, again, it's Windows 7. So in case you guys were wondering what this was, you know, why this is showing this, it's because, you know, Windows XP prior to service packs could not support drives over 137 gigabytes. I mean, we're talking about an operating system that was built in 2001, and most of the hard drives that are around that time were, you know, between, let's say, 10 to 80 gigs. <laughs> but anyways, um, just to go and show you guys what that meant. It's going to be a big adventure, I must say. And hopefully this will go as smooth as possible. So anyways, um, then again, if you're going to purchase a Seagate ST1000D M003 one terabyte drive, you know, hard drive, um, be warned, as, as, as you can see, both of mine are getting bad sectors. And I don't mistreat my drives either. I mean, this system stays on all the time, maintains a fairly constant temperature due to not being on and off, on and off, on and off, you know, day after day. Um, typically, that's better for your hard drives. But in this case, um, <laughs> the primary drives, the two one terabytes in the RAID stripe, are failing. And yes, they still do sell this particular model of hard drive. I've seen it on Newegg and I've seen it in a local computer shop. So um, if you purchase this drive you may want to consider having some good backup software. And yes I do backup my um, stuff every week but I may consider trying a different piece of backup software because with the Windows backup utility if there's one, and I mean just one bad sector anywhere it immediately halts and says the device is not ready and the sad thing about it is the image file that it was updating is no longer readable. That's 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 real nice to know. So I'm gonna try to I'm probably gonna try to find some software that when it backs up it doesn't overwrite every single thing, it just updates the files that have changed since the previous backup. That's more ideal. So that way if something happens between one backup and another your backup is still safe. So anyways, um, let's give you guys an update. Any questions or comments? Feel free to ask them. Thanks for watching.